Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Hagesa. Uh, today, we're going to start uh, some teachings on the Diamond Sutra. Uh, the Diamond Sutra is one of the most famous and well-known by name sutras in the Buddhist canon. Everybody knows the name Diamond Sutra. It's one of the oldest books ever printed. It's one of the most influential uh, teachings in Asia. It has actually shaped Asian consciousness. And also it's in the West very, very, very popular. Uh, the Diamond Sutra is very, very, very short, but this sutra contains all of the teachings, all of the teachings of every religion, all of the teachings of every philosophical tradition. So we're going to look at it. But this is not an intellectual series of talks. We're not, I'm not an academic. I don't have any sort of training in Buddhist sutras. I'm just a Zen monk. I'm just a meditation monk. So this is not going to be academically correct. In fact, I'll probably make many mistakes. That's actually one of the teachings of the Diamond Sutra, the emptiness of all things. So as we look at this, don't expect an academic or intellectual lecture. It's not that. It's a, using the Diamond Sutra to point at our practice. So I'm offering this up to your meditation practice, not to your habit of conceptual thinking. I hope all of you receive it in that light. So let's uh, open up and look at the Diamond Sutra and see what it has to say to us. First of all, I do want to say about the Diamond Sutra that uh, it is, although part of the Mahayana tradition, it is believed that the Buddha uh, may have spoken this uh, around the age of, uh, between the age of 55 and 75 years old. The Buddha died when he was somewhat around 80 years old, so it's about near the end of his life this sutra was given. As we've talked about with some of the other teachings, the Diamond Sutra is part of the Mahayana tradition. But its basic point, its basic teaching, is the teaching of emptiness. 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 But not emptiness in the sense that we understand emptiness as a kind of a, an absence or a lack or a negative quality. Actually, he's talking about the fundamental emptiness of all substance, the emptiness of ego identity, the, the emptiness of will, the emptiness of any kind of I. Therefore, also the emptiness of charity. So we'll find, as we're doing this, that actually everything he talks about in this can be found in any of the other Buddhist traditions and Christian traditions as well. However, it's done very, very, very concisely. So you can read this you can read this Diamond Sutra in 30 minutes. If you drink some coffee, maybe you can do it in 20, 25 minutes. But um, its smallness is not an indication of any lack of depth. Actually, it's perhaps the deepest teaching you'll ever read. It only points at this emptiness so that free from ego, free from this false I, free from delusion, free from suffering, because it's all empty, we can function to help suffering beings. Okay? So, basic teaching of emptiness. It's a very amazing teaching. So, although it's a very small sutra, it's very, very, very deep, and I'll do my best to convey its meaning to you to help your practice. So, we open up. We look at the first chapter of the Diamond Sutra. It says, Thus have I heard, Upon a time, Buddha sojourned in Anapandika's park by Shravasti with a great company of bhikshus, even 1,250. One day, at the time for breaking fast, the world-honored one, enrobed and carrying his bowl, made his way into the great city of Shravasti to beg for his food. In the midst of the city, he begged from door to door according to rule. This done, he returned to his retreat and took his meal. When he had finished, he put away his robe and begging bowl, washed his feet, arranged his seat, and sat down. Very interesting, this first chapter. Looks like, you know, we're ready to read the Diamond Sutra. We're ready for the Buddha to speak. I used to just pass over this. I've read the Diamond Sutra just a few times, but every time I read it, I just passed right through this. 
Well, he does this. Okay, the Buddha got up. Then he went. Then he got his food. Okay, we know that. He begged his food. Then he went from door to door. Okay, then he ate his food. Well, of course, he got the food. He's going to eat it. Then he got the food. He put his food. He put his food. Okay. What, okay, what does he say on the next page? Actually, this first chapter of the Diamond Sutra is the whole Diamond Sutra. The whole meaning of the Diamond Sutra is this first chapter. This is the whole teaching. It's the whole teaching. It seems stupid. It seems like it doesn't mean anything. But it's just showing us, the Buddha is showing this mindful action. Mindful action. That's all. This very mindful action. Not special. We think Buddhism is something special. We think meditation practice is something special. We think religious experience is something special. That's why Jesus had to do miracles to wake people up, because people want something special. Something special happened, therefore, he's special. But the Buddha was not like that. Also, Jesus was not like that. You know, Jesus does these special things, doing these miracles, and then he says, this is not my real job, the special stuff, this magic stuff. That's not my real teaching. But you have little faith, so I have to do this. Same thing with this. It doesn't look special, but this whole first chapter, only this is the Diamond Sutra. Only this. So you thought the Diamond Sutra was small, only this thick. Actually, it's thinner than that. The Diamond Sutra is shorter than that. It's just this first chapter. You can memorize it in five minutes. Why? Why is this the Diamond Sutra? All of you think there must be some mystery. Why he says this is the Diamond Sutra? There must be some secret teaching that he's going to reveal. Actually, there's no secret teaching. This is the Diamond Sutra, this first chapter. Everything we do after today is almost a waste of time. Because in this, what does the Buddha teach? Let's look at it. Thus have I heard... Upon a time, Buddha sojourned in Anapandika's park by Shravasti with a great company of bhikshus, even 1,250. Okay, so it starts off, thus have I heard. This sutra is a recollection of the, the action of the Buddha. Ananda heard this teaching. They repeated the teachings. He heard this story, repeated it in the council after the Buddha's death. Upon a time, Buddha sojourned in Anapandika's park by Shravasti with a great company of bhikshus, even 1,250. So, Buddhism did not happen in the mountains. Here we have this Ipsan in Korea to become a monk. Ipsan. Enter the mountain. When you become a monk, you Ipsan Hada. Actually, in Buddhism, that was not original Buddhism. It was not in the mountain, away from society. Actually, Buddhism happened, that was the biggest city in India, Shravasti. 900,000 people. Huge city. And the Buddha lived in a park right next to it. So first point, there's no Sanjung Bulgo. That's later, that's from China. He lived in the city, maybe like, uh, maybe, or, 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 or any 